Hello and welcome back. If you haven't viewed previous videos and you're new to InfoPath, I recommend you view the previous videos in the series. In this presentation I want to show you how to capture what the user types in two fields and merge the data into one additional single field. For example, their first and second name. I also want the cell to be read-only cell. My next objective is data validation. For example, a field cannot be blank. I want the user to type their email address. I don't want them to be able to submit the form without a valid email address. I also want to provide feedback to my users to let them know if they have inadvertently entered a typo error. Finally, I want users to be able to pick a restaurant name from an InfoPath drop-down list. So my last objective for this presentation is to create a data connection to SharePoint list. Let's preview the completed form to illustrate the objectives for this presentation. As I type my name into the first and second name fields, watch the full name field. You probably noticed the user cannot edit the full name field. Why would we want to pull data from multiple fields and merge into one field? A very good question. My reason in this case is I wouldn't want my user to have to type the same data into multiple fields. Transposition errors occur and more importantly users may not quite rightly understand the reason why they need to enter repetitive data. They don't need to when we can program the field to grab the data already typed. Why would we need full name when we already have two fields holding the data? There can be a number of reasons. For example, we may have a database we store the form's data requiring a full name. Another linked database needing first and second names to be independently stored. This isn't the case for this particular form. The form's entire purpose is to illustrate InfoPath capabilities. I have no doubt you can think of a requirement you may have that would require form data merger. Let's take a look at the names fields and the email address. You'll notice these fields display a red asterisk. If we revert back to InfoPath Designer and take a look at the fields panel, we can see the fields also show a red asterisk. Let's switch back to the form to illustrate email validation functionality. When a user types an incorrect email format and tabs at an Excel, watch what happens. The cell has red dashes appear around the cell to indicate some sort of error. When the user moves their mouse cursor over at the cell, a pop-up message displays enter a valid email address. If we correct the error, the dashes are removed. If the user chooses to ignore the prompts when they elect to submit the form, they discover they cannot do so without amending the error. Moving forward to the next tab in my example form, the user makes a choice from a list of restaurant names in a drop-down box. Whatever restaurant name the user selects determines what dependent controls are populated with, for example, address, type of cuisine, website, etc. To achieve this, the form links to a SharePoint list to display the restaurant names. I switch to my SharePoint list. As you can see, the list holds restaurant name, address, type of cuisine, notes, nearest tube, web address, opening hours. Using a single source of data that doesn't require a form user to edit the data ensures data integrity is maintained. One final point. The restaurant drop-down list has a pink background. My intention is to emphasize the field cannot be blank. When a user selects a restaurant, the background color returns to the default color. In the next presentation, I will cover how to link what the user selects in a SharePoint link control to other InfoPath controls. For this presentation, I will link the InfoPath drop-down list field to my SharePoint list. To begin showing you how to implement the objectives for this video, I'll switch to the form I began developing in the previous video. So the first question you may have is, how can a field be set to cannot be blank? Much easier than you think. You have three choices. One click the field to make it active. Let's click first name. Next, look up 
and cast your eyes over the ribbon. Click Properties tab. You see in the Modify section a tick box cannot be blank. Click the box to place a tick. The second method is click the field to make it active and then right click and select text box properties and in the new window in the data tab section under validation click the box to place a tick in the box cannot be blank. Click OK to close back to the form. The next objective is email validation. Let's first add rows to our table. I place my cursor at the end of a row. Look at the ribbon menu options and click Layout. In the Rows section, I can insert columns, rows. Click Insert Rows below. I suggest you insert five rows. You can just as easily delete them. Now I have my additional rows, I can add a field. Look over to the Fields panel. And down to the bottom of the panel, you will see blue underlined text stating add field. Click this, a new window opens. Name the field full name, notice camel casing and no space between the words. In the data type drop down, you can leave the default. It should read text string. Next click the newly created field and hold the mouse button down, then drag the field to the table. I'm going to use concatenation function to link the first and second name together and place the text in the full name field. If you're familiar with Excel concatenation function, you'll probably find this straightforward. First click the full name control and right click, then select change control. Then choose calculated value. Notice the control now has different formatting. Users cannot edit the field. Right click the field and choose calculated value properties. In the new window under general tab you should have data source option button set. Click the FX button. A new window opens, delete full name and click insert function. Next in the function section I select concat and click OK. You now see three double click to insert field elements. Click the first insert field twice. A new window opens allowing me to pick the first name, click to select and click OK. Double click the last insert field and add last name. In the middle of the first and second name you have a remaining insert field. I'm going to add a space. Highlight the insert field and backspace. First name should end with a comma. Type a single quote, press spacebar once and add another quote then comma. Next click Verify formula. All being well, click OK twice. This returns me back to my form. It's good practice to test my work before moving on. I click Preview Form button. Type in a name for first and second name fields. Note the full name field displays the two fields as one. Take a look at full name label. You'll notice the words full name are separated and at the end of the address label a semicolon. If you recall when I added the fields I didn't add a space. I did capitalize the words. Doing so enabled InfoPath to identify the words and then separate the words. Now I'm going to tackle email address. Look over to the fields panel and down to the bottom of the panel and we will see blue underlined text stating add field. Click this. A new window opens. Name the field email address. Note no space between email and address. Look down and you'll see the third method to add a field cannot be blank. Click to place a tick in the box. Next click the newly created field and hold the mouse button down and then drag the field to the table. When you see two cells highlighted, release the mouse button. Now we have an email field I'm going to configure field cannot be blank and an email rule to check user typed email format is correct. Click the email field to make this active then right click and select text box properties. 
In the new window, in the general tab under validation, I'm going to place a tick in the box. This cannot be blank. Next, I'm going to set up my rule. Looking up at the ribbon, I see add rule. When I click this sub menu appears, casting my eye over the various options I see is not an email address. I'm going to click this option. When I place mouse over this option, another menu appears named actions. I left click show validation error. Next to the fields panel, a new panel appears called rules. In the details for box, I'm going to type is not a valid email address. Under conditions, I see required email does not match and required email cannot be blank. Required email cannot be blank will kick in if a user attempts to submit a form without a correctly formatted email address. The required email does not match will initiate when a user types an unrecognized email format. The rule type is a validation rule. Below I see screen tip. I'm going to add a screen tip by typing enter a valid email address. Next, I'm going to preview my work by clicking form preview button. I'm going to type an invalid email and tab to the next field. Instantly, I can see the red dashes around the cell. Moving the mouse over the cell, my screen tip message is displayed. I'll correct my error and then tab to the next cell. All is fine, so I can move on to create my drop down list linked to a SharePoint list. We begin by looking over to the fields panel. Then down to the bottom of the panel, we will see blue underlined text stating add field. Click this. A new window opens. Name the field restaurant name. Notice capitalization and no space between the words. Leave the data type as text string. Click the box to ensure field cannot be blank. Click OK. Next, drag the field to the table and place where you wish to. Click to the field to make it the active field, then right click and change control. And in the next side menu, select drop down list box. If the field isn't active, then right click the field again and select drop down list box properties. In the data tab, click the option Get Choices from an external data source. Click the Add button. This initiates a data connection wizard. The default option button is selected to receive data. I want that, so I'm happy to click Next. The next step has a number of connection types to choose from. Click the SharePoint library and list option and click next. Now I'm going to be asked for my SharePoint URL. At this point, it's a good idea to switch over to your browser and copy SharePoint site web address up to the end of the .com. You don't need to worry about finding the SharePoint list URL. Having copied your SharePoint URL, Switch back and paste the URL into the wizard and click next. The following step, the wizard provides a list of all the SharePoint lists held in your tenancy. Scroll to find the list. In my case, I'm looking for London restaurants. So I click to make this my choice. I then click next. The succeeding steps request us to choose fields. I'm looking for restaurant name. The greyed out field is used to identify the SharePoint connection back to InfoPath. The sort by option, I scroll to find restaurant names, then I click the option button to sort by ascending, then click next. The next step in the process, I'm shown a window, asking whether I wish to store data on my devices. This functionality is useful if you are likely to not have access to the internet. This means the required data for the form is held on your device. This is okay. In my case, the database is small. However, if your data has to remain secure and you have several thousand data elements, you should be wary 
the security implications and the resource required to store the data and sync. I'm going to leave this unticked and click Next. In this window, I can name the connection. I like to add SP to the beginning of the name. This helps me to identify it. The checkbox to automatically retrieve data when the form is open is another questionable option. In my case, the database is so small, it's OK to leave ticked. However, you have 15,000 elements to download before the form loads, your user might be somewhat wary of using the form. If that was the case, I would add a button on the form for the user to click to download the data. I'm happy to proceed, so I click Finish. The window should now display a data source. Entries, value, and display name should be populated. There are different things I can do here. For example, the user selects the restaurant name and the restaurant manager name is displayed. I can now click OK. My last objective is to set a field is blank rule. Looking at the ribbon home tab, I click add rule button. In the if drop down, I select is blank. In the second menu, under formatting, I select bad. In the rule details panel, I'm going to name my rule user must select. That's it, couldn't be simpler. Finally, I can view and test my work by clicking form preview. If I click the drop down, select a restaurant name, the field displays the selected.